Hi everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. Have you ever had to update your view based on a keyboard suddenly appearing in your app? That's what we're gonna tackle in this episode of the Swift Arcade. I'm gonna show you how to adjust your view so when that keyboard appears, your elements aren't blocked, users can still enter text, and your app just looks buttery smooth and good because you've updated your view based on the appearance of that keyboard coming in. So if you've ever wondered how to do this, or you're wondering what are the mechanics that go on behind the scenes to make all that happen, come on to the Swift Arcade and I'll show you a couple different ways we can tackle this challenge. All right, let's quickly go over the problem and see what we're trying to address. Here we've built a nice looking view, got a couple of text fields for resetting your password. And when we come in here, and they enter, say, a password up here, that's no problem. We can go ahead and enter our text there. But watch what happens when we tap this text field down here. Our view is obstructed. We can't enter the text. We need to update our view based on the appearance of the keyboard. Let's look at two different ways we can do that. The first way we're gonna tackle this is very crudely, we're just gonna detect the presence of the keyboard and slide the entire frame or view up two or 300 points. Let's see how that works. So I've got a function here called setup keyboard hiding. And if we go take a look at what that does, this is how we register and detect the appearance and disappearance of the keyboard. We hook into notification center, we add an observer here, keyboard will show, keyboard will hide, Hooking into the UI responder, keyboard will show notification, keyboard will hide notification. And when these things happen, these selectors are functions are gonna call, and this is how we can deal with the appearance and disappearance of the keyboard. The very simplest thing we can do, very crude, is simply take our entire frame of our view and slide it up, say 200 points. That's what we're gonna do when the keyboard will show. And then when the keyboard will hide or disappears, we're just gonna put a frame back to zero. So if we run this now and see what happens, what we'll see is when we tap our text field and it detects that keyboard's presence, it's gonna slide everything up 200 points. And when we lose focus and give up the responder, it's just gonna slide it down. This is the simplest, easiest, crudest thing we can do. It might be good enough for your app just to get you going, but it's not perfect. To really do this well, we probably have to add a little more logic to detect when the keyboard is presented, because if I tap it again, it's just gonna keep sliding it up or down, for example, here and here. So I kinda need a Boolean in there to track whether or not we're, we've already adjusted it. But this is a good, simple way just to kinda get things going. And if you just need to simply get your view up without doing a lot of math, and a lot of sophisticated stuff, this will get you out the gate. Now, if all you needed to do is bump it up and then bump it down, you're done. You can stop watching this video. You can go back to whatever you're doing. Uh, you've probably solved the problem. But if you want a much more sophisticated or more elegant way of dealing with this, one that's a little bit smarter, not as clumsy or random as a blaster, watch what we can do here. I'm gonna comment out this simple, crude bump up, bump down, and I'm gonna bring in this different way or more elegant way of basically dealing with the appearance of the keyboard in the app. And watch what this one does. This one's a little bit smarter, and then it can figure out what element here was tapped. For example, if we tap this text field up here and the keyboard appears, we don't need to adjust the view. It's perfectly fine where it is. We don't need to move things around. We can leave it alone. Whereas if we tap down here, this one figures out, hey, our view would have been obstructed. We do need to shift things up. Let's update the view accordingly. Okay, let's take a look and now see how we can go about doing this with this code here. Okay, there's actually quite a bit of magic going on with that little snippet of code, which we're gonna go over shortly, but first I wanna explain at a high level what's going on here. First thing we do is we detect the presence of the keyboard. You already saw how to do that. We can add that observer and hook in and know when the keyboard is presented. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna determine the position of the element was, that was tapped. We're gonna figure out whether it was this text field, whether or not it was this text field, and if it is a text field that we think might be obscured, we need to figure out how do we know if that keyboard is gonna block it. 
What we do there is we figure out and determine what the height of the keyboard is. We then do some basic math based on where this element is in the view, what the height of the keyboard is, and then we do a simple comparison and see would the keyboard obscure or block the view based on its position or its height. That's basically what we do with this code. Let's walk through it very slowly and see how it works. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna determine that keyboard's height. And that's what we do with this line right here. We can get the frame of the keyboard by going into the user info that was passed as part of this NS notification. Use this key, keyboard frame ender user info key, to get the frame. And if we do that, we will know what the frame is of the keyboard on our screen. So if you wanted to, you could you know, print out these values, take a look at the keyboard frame, and we'll see and know where it is on our screen and what its position is, and we can use that to determine whether or not this text field is blocked. Now the next thing we need to figure out is, well, how do we know whether it was this text field that caused the keyboard to appear, or it was this one down here? Here we have a nice little snippet of code called current first, which uses the UI responder chain to actually capture who caused that event to appear and then use that to figure out whether it was this element up here or this element down here. If you're not familiar with, with responder chain, don't worry. This is a low level eventing mechanism that basically underpins entirely how UI kit works, no big deal. But basically what we do here is we capture the responder as a var by writing this extension on UI responder and we fire an event up the responder chain captured as this element down here and that's how we can get either this text field or this text field and use that to determine whether or not they are blocked. So if you go back to the code, we'll see that's what's going on with this line here. We can get our current text field, either this one or this one, and now we just need to figure out whether this is going to be beneath the keyboard when it appears on the screen. Now there's just one more little wrinkle here. When we tap this and it appears, when we get back this from our current first responder, it's going to be in a coordinate system local to this view. What that means is this text field actually thinks it's going to be sitting at a coordinate system of say an x value of 27 and a y of zero, because when we get it back, that's the coordinate system it's gonna be relative to. We need to convert that into the super views coordinate system of the entire view. So this is an example of where we actually need to convert coordinate systems from one local view into a super view, and that's what we can do with this line right here. View convert current text field frame to the current text field frame of the super view, it will do that conversion for us. And that's what we see right here. So now with that, we've got everything we need to figure out whether or not this is blocked. We've got the position of the top of the keyboard. We've got the position of the element here of this text field. And we just need to do some basic math and figure out if the text field bottom is greater than the keyboard top, we'll know we wanna slide that up. And just the one other slightly confusing thing to remember is that the coordinate system for iOS, this is increasing Y, this is increasing X. That's why when we do the math, we can figure out and see that this text field bottom 404 is greater than the keyboard top. That's our trigger, or that's what tells us that we need to adjust our view because the keyboard has appeared. And that's what you can see with this code right here. We just do that comparison we, we, we know that we need to update the view. Now there's just one little bit of math here, which is really nice. This is just a nice dynamic way of figuring out how much to slide the view up based on the keyboard from appearing. And this is just an empirically based thing. There's no real magic here other than that. This is a value that I found works really well on projects. You can basically just take your text box Y position where it appears on the screen here, subtract the keyboard top Y divided by two, and then invert that with a minus one because this is increasing y and this will dynamically figure out how much to adjust it up based on where your element is and the height of the keyboard which is great because that takes into account different views and sizes and that my friends is everything you see in this code here so when we run this here this is what gives us a really nice effect 
We won't adjust the keyboard if we detect that it didn't come up here, but we will adjust the keyboard if we think it's obscured because we've done the math and we can dynamically slide everything up accordingly and it's just a beautiful, nice app experience. <laughs> Apple does have some guidance on how to handle keyboard layout in their human interfaces guidelines and I totally encourage you to read it. I've been coming to this document for years. They have a nice little explanation of what we just solved, how to update your view based on the appearance of the keyboard. But they've also recently updated this. And I didn't realize this until, in fact, today, I came and noticed that they've got a new layout and guide safe area section. And if you click in there, you'll see that they actually have a brand new keyboard layout guide for iOS 15. And I didn't even know this existed. So in the future, I'm definitely going to want to explore this. I mean, when I come into this UI keyboard layout guide, see how this works in iOS 15. And they've got even some nice sample code down here. If you click on adjust in your layout and keyboard layout guide, you have a nice sample project. You can download this. And if you have the luxury of working in iOS 15 and you're using some brand new layout guides, you can investigate and see if this is a more elegant way of updating your view based on the keyboard guide. That's probably what you want to do. I unfortunately am maintaining apps that can't use iOS 15, so I still have to use the existing techniques that I showed you here in this video. But there you have it, two different ways of tackling this. One, the more custom way I showed you, but in the future, definitely check out this keyboard layout guide available in iOS 15. If you want to play with any of the code that we've got here today, I've got a text version of everything we went to on my iOS professional repo. I'll leave a link in the show notes so you can just click on this and go through everything we talked here. I've also got an example download app in there so you can play with the source code and see how that works. And I'll also leave some links in the show notes for where you can go read about Apple's guidance on their brand new layout guides. And hopefully I'll do a video of that in the future, but until then I'll let you go ahead and read that on your own. All right, well, there you have it, folks. A couple different ways of dealing with views and keyboards. You've got a crude way of just bumping everything up. You've got a more sophisticated way, which does some math to figure out whether or not to even show the keyboard in the first place. And of course, Apple has a brand new keyboard layout guide, which hopefully I'll cover in a future episode. That looks really interesting. I'd like to dive into that more and see how all that works. I hope that was helpful. I hope this is going to make you build some great apps out there and deal with views when keywords appear in your apps. And if you like this kind of content, remember, do hit like, do hit subscribe. Thank you for your support and happy app building. All right. Till next time. Have a great weekend, everyone. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.